I have a new girlfriend. You will go to your parents since I am divorcing you and moving in with her. What you're saying is unclear to me. I am no longer in need of you. If you wish to work as a cleaner or earn a living, I can leave you with my parents. My husband and my in-laws make fun of me. Even if they are the worst kind of people. I prefer it that way. Then you must all depart. I'm a 32-year-old office worker named Noah. I've been employed my entire life. I began working for a large corporation after I graduated from college. I put in a lot of effort and earned the prerequisites for advancements for roughly 10 years. I am now a department manager at such a young age because of that. I am fortunate to have a manager that is constantly able to share something of value with me and a team of exceptionally brilliant and driven employees. Although I had a highly fulfilling career, I had a very unfulfilling personal life. When I was a student, I had a boyfriend. But I haven't had one since I started working. Concerned about my predicament, a friend threw me a dinner party. Matthew and I met there. I had the feeling that he was really pleasant, polite, and had a lovely grin. We had a lot in common because we were of the same age. And we enjoyed our conversation. We quickly became friends, shared contact details, and began dining alone together. After that, he was clean about his emotions for me. And we began dating. He proposed to me. And we had a good relationship. In the end. We were married. Being married to the man I adored made me very happy. I visited his parents' home shortly after to say hello. I was greeted warmly and graciously by his parents. Nice to meet you. Noah. It's unbelievable that such a lovely individual became Matthew's bride. His mother exclaimed. I am so proud of my son for bringing a good woman here. Stop it. Mom and Dad. Noah is becoming frightened. Oh my. If you really think so. You can say it. That's right. It's a compliment. So it's okay. Like him. His parents were quite approachable and pleasant to chat to. Noah works for a major company. Doesn't she? Oh. That's fantastic. Being a lady who can work hard is cool. When you get married. Will you leave your job? No. I will continue to work. Well. You work for a reputable company and have a nice job. That's preferable. I felt a sense of relief. My pals told me that their mother-in-law had ordered them to resign from their position. They claim that they frequently hear that a wife's role is to provide for her husband. So I was relieved. I considered my prospective mother-in-law to be giving. We were married after saying hello to my folks. The prospect of starting a new married life filled my heart with delight. My husband and I began our new married life together when he moved into the house I was residing in. Being wedded to my husband, whom I adore, makes me very happy. Being able to spend all of my time at home with him makes me happy. As does having him there when I get home from work. After six months of dating, my spouse indicated he needed to talk to me about something. If you don't mind. I'd like you to live with my father and mother. What are you saying? Yes. They are getting old. And I am worried about many things. I see. I could definitely relate to my husband's feelings. I have nothing to worry about because my brother and his wife presently live with my parents who are roughly the same age as my husband's parents. But it makes sense that my spouse worries about his parents because he is the only child. 
Does this mean we are living with my in-laws? Yes. It would. However. Do they have a room for us? For whatever reason. They use every room. About that. If you like. I think it would be a good idea to renovate my parents' house and make it a two-family house. Two families. I think so. Doing that will save us a ton of money compared to buying a new home. Surely we can find a way to live in a lovely, roomy house without sacrificing any privacy whatsoever. I see. In my opinion. The proposal was quite appealing. Even though my in-laws are wonderful people. We probably wouldn't spend much time together. Living in two distinct houses would make things easier. Yes. That's fine. It will make my parents very happy. Seeing my spouse so pleased made me happy. Two. My in-laws paid us a visit later on. And they were overjoyed to be there. With a family as nice and positive as theirs. I even considered the idea of having two homes. My husband and I talked about renovating my in-law's house not long after that. My husband made an unexpected comment when we were talking about the estimated $100,000 price tag. I really need to ask you a favor. Might you be able to cover the cost of the renovations? Explain it to me. Is that the whole sum? Why? My husband then appeared very uneasy. Actually. We are in debt. Astounded. I was. In all the time we were dating and married. Neither my husband nor my parents-in-law had ever said anything like that. Astounded. I was. How much money are they in debt for? Close to 150,000. Excuse me? I was surprised by how much money it was. I had anticipated a few tens of thousands. I finally broke into a loud yell. At first. It wasn't a big deal. But as time went on. It ballooned. And no matter how much I tried. I just couldn't repay it. The pension is enough to support my parents right now. The debt is growing exponentially. And I am unable to repay them to the extent that I would want. Oh. I perceive. The unexpected and distressing revelation made my shock and anger obvious. That my in-laws owing such a substantial amount was news to me. Please. Noah. Do me a favor. Have you any idea how much money my parents owe? Neither they nor I can afford it anymore. And my wage isn't great. Either. Then won't it be challenging to share a home with two families while we remodel it? No. That is crucial. So we should proceed as scheduled. I desire to safeguard my parents and take care of my life with you. Therefore I apologize in advance if the topics I'm discussing are too heavy. I love you. Noah. And I love my parents. Too. If you truly care about me. Please lend me a hand. I apologize if I'm being selfish. I will gradually repay you. Anxiety gripped me. No one else would have helped my spouse and my in-laws but me. At the time. I was totally fooled by my husband's comments. Even though I knew he loved me deeply. I believe love is blind. And I couldn't be more correct. Once I said. Okay. I'll pay for it. I meant it. With a heartfelt, thank you so much. My spouse shook my hand and expressed his immense gratitude. After he informed my in-laws. They came to our home to express their regrets. Even my mother-in-law wept with happiness. Now fourth. 
I must give it my all. There was no way around it. I was going to pay off my in-law's debt. Even though I had some money saved up. I was nervous about paying the full amount all at once. At this time. I intend to use $330,000 of my money to cover the total. With the remainder to be paid in installments. After that. My in-laws came over. And we discussed repayment. I told them about the recent installments I had made. I could do anything I wanted. They said. So why don't you deposit the funds straight into the debt payback account? We struggle with money management. And I'm a little hesitant to send large sums of money. My in-laws nodded when my husband said this. I must admit that moving the funds to my parents' in-laws account and then waiting for them to move it to their repayment account would take a lot of time. I also agreed to that because it was a big amount and I would not like it if the money was not transferred in the middle of the process. After the discussion was over. My parents-in-law appeared to be rather relieved. The monthly debt collection is no longer a threat to us. That has been somewhat frightening. You should give Noah a proper thank you. Dad and Mom. Well. I've thanked you so many times that I can't even count. I am really grateful to you. Many thanks. No. 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 Although I was glad my in-laws were content. I was a little uneasy because I feared they could view me as a money spinner. I felt a little horrible when they said those final words. But I wanted to look after my husband's family. Who I adored. I started making payments with that in mind. And we finished our two-family home and remodeled our house at the same time. We began residing in a lovely, roomy home together. My husband's eyes glowed at the new home. And my parents-in-law were overjoyed. Cooking in the new system kitchen was enjoyable for me as well. And I was happy that the renovation was complete. Working here is more handy and nearby. I'll have more time to spare if my commute is shorter. I can study effectively during that free time as well. I was putting a lot of effort into paying off my debt during the day. But I was a little troubled by the fact that my husband did not contribute to my debt repayment in any way. He promised to assist me pay off my parents-in-law's debt when I told him about it. But he hasn't even indicated that he will be using his own income to cover it. He told me that his wage was completely insufficient to cover the payment when I brought this up to him previously. My spouse obstinately refused to show me his pay stubs when I asked him what his take-home money was. He must pay back his loans. But I'm not sure how much money he makes. For around a year. I put in a lot of effort to pay off the loan. My parents-in-law inquired about the amount of money I still owed at that point. You haven't lost that much if a year has passed. You will repay between $100,000 and $155,000 at most. To give you an idea. We repaid about $30,000 this year. Leaving about $90,000 left over. My parents-in-law were astonished when I mentioned this. What? Did you repay that much? That's fantastic. Noah. If you continue at that rate. You will have paid off the loan in roughly three years. I can pay it off if I put forth a lot of effort. Many thanks. My in-laws were both thrilled and sobbing. I believed that all of the effort had been worthwhile if my husband's parents were content in this way. But a few days later. I ran upon something unexpected. The day I informed my spouse I ended up working overtime. We were able to leave on time because the work went unexpectedly smoothly and since several of us had free hands. Like clockwork. I raced home to make supper for my husband. However. To my surprise. 
My in-law's shoes were waiting for me at the front door. His family has arrived. My mother-in-law is here. I made my way to the living room under the assumption that they were busy. Then I overheard my spouse and my in-laws having a conversation. Matthew. Marrying that woman was the proper choice. Wasn't it? Well done. That woman has so much money. I can't believe you married her. I was very careful and wooed her after learning she works for a large corporation. You ought to show greater appreciation. Oh no. You're just one of the many who contributed to that debt. What? I. On the other hand. Have the least. I don't understand what you're saying. What was your investment in horse racing? Your gaming skills are lacking. There were periods when we were in the black. Because I get a jackpot every so then. With a debt of $150,000. How are you going to turn a profit? But if we keep going at this pace. We'll be able to pay off our debt and start over. That's fantastic. And she even helped with the renovations to our home. My wife is wonderful. After she pays off the debt. I'm going to discard her. Both my hubby and my in-laws found amusement in it. I stood at the front door for a time. Frozen in shock. After I collected myself a bit. I yelled out from the front door. I'm home, and slammed the door shut. My in-laws and spouse were waiting for me in the living room. And they were all smiling as I entered. Noah. Oh no. Return home. Great work. Great work. Then we will return to our room. Would you like to have supper with me again? After overhearing my in-laws earlier talk. I was petrified by their sweet smile. Similarly. I was astonished by this man who is smiling and acting like a decent husband. My efforts to recompense them left me perplexed. You mentioned staying late at the office earlier. Didn't you? I decided to whip up dinner quickly because I've been working more than I anticipated. And I made it home on time. I acted calmly until dinner time in the hopes that my husband wouldn't notice what I had done. But I didn't recognize it at the time. Then I went to my room and sobbed alone while my husband bathed. Even though I sobbed uncontrollably. I still wanted to spare my husband and in-laws any trouble. To the best of my ability. I sobbed. I moved swiftly after that. I started getting ready for the divorce and then gradually planned my post-divorce activities. Three months or so went by. I told my spouse that I had settled my parents-in-law's debt. Acting as though I was pleased. My hubby gave me an eye roll. What? You settled the debt? That $150,000. That should have taken about three years. Right? I had a good amount of money saved up. But I was hesitant to pay it all off at once. I therefore began deducting a small amount from my savings and wages. Since we were already below $100,000. I reasoned that it would be best to settle everything at once. I understand. Do you mind if I check? I showed the bank book to my husband. Oh. That's right. The entire $90,000 was paid at once. I could tell that my husband was eager to leave. But he made every effort to hide his excitement. Whoa. Noah. I'm grateful. My fathers will adore this. My husband put his hands on his face and appeared to be crying. But I could tell he was only acting. My parents-in-law also arrived and thanked me shortly after that. Many thanks. I'm so happy I got to meet Noah. You resemble God. 
I would have been content to be duped and go along with the ride if I had been unaware of any of this. However, I already know the true nature of these people. And I only took action because I was prepared for my plan. My husband asked to talk to me a few days later. My hubby had a solemn expression. What the devil? I apologize. Noah. But you must part ways with me. What? What are you saying? I purposely pretended to be astonished. I recently got a new girlfriend. You're going to my parents' house. And I'm divorcing you because I'm going to live here with her. The surprising statement from Matthew truly caught me off guard. I had overheard our previous talk and knew my husband would abandon me. However, I did not anticipate that he would publicly confess his affair once he had paid off his debts. When he left me, what did he mean when he asked me to visit his in laws? Well, I'm not sure I get what you're saying. My husband's mood soured when I mentioned this. You're not at all understanding. I am no longer in need of you. I can keep you here as a housekeeper or as a provider. Oh no. Then my in-laws entered through the open front door. Have you told her at last? Matthew? Yes. I did tell her. I wish I had been present at that time. Is that all there is to it? If you complete the duties for us, you are welcome to visit our home. However, we will undoubtedly charge you rent. My husband and my in-laws made fun of me. I can only say that they are the worst people I have ever encountered. Then you must all depart. My remark caused my in-laws to roll their eyes. What are you discussing? Did you forget? I can easily cover the cost of the renovations on my own. You gave the house my name instead. I have the right to this house because of this. I have the authority to choose who gets to stay in the house and who gets to go. My in-laws' expressions changed to a shade of blue as a result of my remark. And it wasn't until afterwards that they recalled the house's title. I was absolutely taken aback. You simply cannot continue to reside here. And I apologize. You won't recognize each other if we end our marriage. My God. Even though my in-laws saw the seriousness of the situation, my husband couldn't help but respond. But you cleared off our debt when we were married. It is you who is suffering a financial loss. We could afford a new place to live if we didn't have any debt. I agree with you. My in-laws and husband thanked me for allowing them to live in a nice house while I paid off their bills. Therefore, I informed them the truth. I'm sorry. But I failed to settle the remaining $90,000 balance. What? No way. However, your bank book had missing funds. The debt has remained same for $90,000 because that was only an independent account that I set up and transferred around. I have been consistently paying huge sums of money. Thus the collections haven't arrived yet. The remaining amount is your responsibility because, in my opinion, they should arrive now. My in-laws and hubby turned pale. After that, I fired them a warning shot. You should pay the alimony. Matthew. Because you admitted to me that you were having an affair. Oh no. Despite her attractiveness. She went out with me since I am a property and money owner. She is going to leave me if you demand alimony from me. That is completely irrelevant to me. No way. My apologies. Oh. Please stay with us. Both my husband and my in-laws are terrified that the adulteress will dump us. Parents and children alike are utterly self-centered and filthy. I am no longer involved with any of you. 
I have also listed this house for sale. So it doesn't matter what you think. Additionally, I will pursue legal action to collect the 60 grand in debt that I settled on your behalf via my attorney. Oh my! Shocked by the loss of all they owned. The in-laws froze. After that, I had my lawyer file for a divorce and alimony on my husband's behalf. The adulteress was also ordered to pay alimony to me. My in-laws owe me $60,000 and I wanted my money back. The truth is that the in-laws refurbished home fetched close to $200,000. We received a great deal because it was in a desirable area and a family was only searching for a duplex. They were able to purchase it. And I ended up paying a total of $160,000, $60,000 toward the loan and $100,000 for the renovations. Despite spending $160,000, I made $40,000. The scenario is even better because my ex-husband and a fair partner both pay me alimony. Not only that, but my ex-parents-in-law also gave me a modest sum of $60,000. It is precisely I who am benefiting the most from this predicament. Due of the severity of the harm I have endured. I have learned to distrust others. So I believe this is a fair request. I had a lot of funds and wanted to learn how to invest to pay off my in-laws' debt swiftly. I invested a few tens of thousands of dollars since I had a lot of savings. My assets increased significantly in a year. I was also well paid after a rise. I saved a lot to take such a dramatic step. My former in-laws were back in debt and lost their house. But I benefited most. They deserved it because they scammed me like a fraud. Such people should go to hell. I should think about what happened to me and improve my people's skills. I'll also keep saving and building my assets so I may retire in luxury and make many great memories with trusted people. After watching the story above. Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.